I also want to mention that I was a student at Oregon State and Mark was my fearless leader. He was our dean at the time, so I've known Mark for quite a while too. Um, before I go any further, I want to thank our sponsors and our host, um, NSF and NASA, and their program managers are here, so walk up and shake their hand and thank them because this is the reason we have OCB. And also HUI. Um, there are a million people at HUI who make this meeting happen, so please definitely. There's um, Matt Barton up there in the IT booth um, who is, really makes all of the electronic stuff happen because that is not my strength. So. I just want to briefly, I don't usually do this, but I know there are a lot of newbies in the room, and so I'd like to start doing this every year to kind of set the stage. Um, just by talking about what OCB is, some of you, this is your first meeting, you may not have been here before. Um, OCB is really a network of, of scientists working across disciplines to understand the ocean's role in the global carbon cycle. Also looking at how marine ecosystems and biogeochemistry are responding to environmental change. We do. A, we have myriad support roles in our office. Um, how can we help you? We, we coordinate one hell of a workshop. Um, we run PI meetings, short courses. Um, we've we've um, sponsored working groups. We've uh, worked on synthesis activities. Uh, we do a lot of science planning, as you'll see in a couple of slides. Um, we serve as an information hub, visit our websites, our email lists, so news newsletters, social media. Um, and we are also involved in education and outreach materials, both development of them and disseminating those that you make. So feel free to tell me when you have a new one and I can advertise it very widely. We have an email list of probably 1,700 people at this point, and it's growing and growing every year. And we're also really interested and concerned about training the next generation of ocean scientists. So we are always either trying to engage early career folks at our activities or our running our own training sessions or trying to provide travel support for those younger members of the community to go to other people's, other, uh, other training um, activities from other programs. Uh, the leadership consists of the project office, which I've already introduced, and we have a scientific steering committee, which now consists of 19 members who, whose pictures I will show up here at the end of this presentation so that you can all go and seek them out and talk to them about how to get involved in OCB and how to get involved in a leadership role. Um, we also have, um, the SSC has subcommittees on ocean acidification, ocean time series, and ocean fertilization. So if those are topics that you're interested in, please come talk to me. Um, and I will also, I can also introduce um, one of the co-chairs of our ocean acidification subcommittee, Jeremy Mathis is here. Um, you will see his picture on, uh, up here in, briefly. And also, uh, one of the, the chair of our Ocean Time Series Committee, Susanna Neuer, is here. Um, she, her picture will come up, too. They are both on the SSC as well, so I encourage you to talk to them. As far as the science goes, OCB science has really been a work in progress. It evolves in response to what the community needs it to be. That's the great thing about OCB. It's flexible and it's, it's ever-evolving as, as things come to fruition and sometimes they take a life of their own and something else comes down the pike. So OCB is really an evolving mechanism for, for getting science done. Um, our current major foci are changing ocean chemistry, ocean carbon uptake and storage, biological pump. You're, you're, you're probably noticing that a lot of these are pretty heavy on the agenda this year. Um, ocean observing, um, both autonomous platforms, shipboard, satellite, um, all forms of ocean observing, um, changing marine ecosystems, and the coastal carbon cycle. I want to mention that we're fortunate to share a campus with the Biological and Chemical Oceanography Data Management Office. A lot of the data that you produce as a community gets submitted to this data management office, and um, Danny Kincaid is here with us this week. So I want to, I'm not sure if Danny is in the audience right now. Stand up, Danny, please. They are having tutorials every day at lunch. You can sign up for them from the logistics page of the website. Um, they'll also have a poster garden up at the poster sessions. So stop by and get some more information. There'll be Bico Demo staff all around to talk to. And I also want to highlight that Alex Kozier is here from CDX. So go talk to him. That's another huge repository for the, the data sets produced by our community. Alex, where are you? Stand up. <laughs> There's Alex right there. 
Um, as I said, we're involved in outreach materials. I wanted to highlight um, a couple of, of recent ones, um, our 20 facts document on ocean acidification, and also we have an anthropogenic carbon slide deck that you can download with explanatory notes, thanks to the help of um, Galen McKinley, who's in the audience, and Craig Carlson. These are fantastic teaching and outreach tools for your public talks, and you can get these off our website at any time. And we've also been very involved in recent science, science planning efforts, like the International North Atlantic Arctic Science Plan, which resulted in a Dear Colleague letter, which is still active at NSF, and the North American Coastal Carbon Science Plan, which benefited from a lot of support from both NSF and mostly NASA. Um, Paula Bontempi in the back there has been a huge advocate for this, and that science plan was completed this past year um, and is available, and we're hoping to see that take some momentum. Uh, we also have been involved in coordinating time series, work across time series, um, trying to, to promote data intercomparability across time series. So we have an actual website dedicated to a global biogeochemical time series network. Um, there are also um, flyers out on the table out there uh, with information about this, this network and also IGMETS. It's a, um, uh, international Marine Ecological Time Series Scientific uh, Synthesis document. So, with that, there's a lot more big science to be done. Um, you can see a lot of it highlighted in this year's agenda. These are all things that are going to come out. Um, PACE, SOCOM, exports, Arctic colors, um, the biology of the biological pump, a workshop that NSF sponsored back in February that has produced a white paper that I hope you're all going to be providing feedback on by August 1st, um, and celebration of the second International Indian o Ocean Expedition. So I, I wanna end by telling you to get involved. Come talk to me, um, especially if you're a newbie and you haven't been here before and you wanna learn more about OCB, we have, a social, me we have social media a Twitter account, follow us, read our newsletter. There are a few copies out there on the table. Participate in our activities like you are today. Um, join the OCB Leadership Committee, um, one of them, the Ocean Acidification, Ocean Time Series, the SSC. Um, we actually have a, an annual call in the fall for nominations for the OCB Scientific Steering Committee, and it goes out to our email list. So if you're not on our email list, please see Mary and get yourselves added. Um, but if you're interested in, in doing that, you can self-nominate or you can nominate a colleague. Um, and we go through a voting process amongst the SSC. We do a formal vote, voting process to bring on new members. We'll also be releasing um, an annual solicitation. Uh, it's kind of quasi-annual. We release a solicitation for OCB activities on a quasi-annual basis. Um, and we encourage you to submit your great ideas. For, for OCB activities, smaller workshops, targeted workshops, or working groups, or whatever you think is needs to be done right now. So these are the, our current SSC members. Um, I want to just kind of leave that up there while I give you some logistical announcements so you can kind of soak that in and go seek them out and talk to them. Well, most of them are here. Um, a few logistical things. Um, you've got your folders. Inside them are data sticks, OCB data sticks, and they have a whole bunch of these products that I've advertised here on them. So whatever's not on those data sticks, get it from the website. The restrooms, down the stairs behind the auditorium, um, you'll see the signage. The meals are all outside, as you probably know. The ground's a little uneven, so be careful out there. Uh, there's also a water cooler out there if you want to refill your water bottles at any point. Um, do not park down here or you will be towed. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm allowed to park here because I get here at 7 a.m. and I have a sticker, but I guarantee you, please use the shuttle. That's why we're paying for them. They're great shuttles. Please park on the main, up at the Quisic campus and take the shuttle down. Um, there's a Google Docs spreadsheet to coordinate rides um, to and from the airport. So go to the logistics page of the website. I just wanna ask the plenary speakers to try to load your talks ahead of time. Um, and session chairs, if you could help with gathering those talks, that's always great. Um, make sure I have a copy of your talk before you leave the workshop too, please. We will convert them to PDF and post them on the website to share. So if there are things you wanna take out, that's totally okay. Um, or if you really have a sensitive talk, you're not really just ready to share, that's fine. If you're in the audience and you have questions for the speakers, please wait for the mics because we are webcasting live. So people can't hear the questions if you don't talk into the mic. Poster sessions will be up at Quisset campus. Um, 
if you want Mary to go up, she's going to go check the and make sure everything's set up okay up there. If you want her to hang your poster, if you have it with her today, with you today, you can hand it off to her or leave it up there at the top there, um, where those people are standing in that back corner near the exit sign. That would be fine. Or you can just hang it when you get there later. There's no assigned spaces. Just hang it up. The materials are there. You should be able to. You should be fine. Um, there should be a list in your folders of all of the posters so you know who you want to go visit and um, just be sure um, to get the full abstracts document from the website that's probably a 40 or 40 or a little over 40 page document so I didn't want to print that um, we are webcasting so like I said talking to the mics the Wi-Fi information for the meeting who we meeting is right up there on the whiteboard with a <coughs> password and also the Twitter hashtag if you want to tweet please do I encourage anybody who is social media savvy to tweet like crazy on this meeting. I would love that. I'm going to try to do some myself, but it's really hard to follow and run things and tweet. So please share this. We like to share our meetings as broadly as possible. Um, oh, sure. I don't even remember. Um, for the lunches, we have a special lunch on Monday. The Exports SDT is meeting for lunch with early career folks. Um, please go to the signed, the marked tables. Um, we have, we'll have the tables marked off for that. So if, please, if you're not going to that, don't sit at one of those tables. Those are special for that meeting. And every day, pretty much, we'll have lunches like that. And we'll have tables cordoned off for different events. You'll see what they are in the agenda. Um, I think the Elvin and Atlantis tours are closed at this point. I had a couple people come talk to me today, but if I get any spaces, I'll let you know. Um, I think that's it. There's a postdoc and student event with agency program managers in Carriage House Tuesday evening, so you'll see that there. Um, if you want to join a Compass Communication training at this point, please see me, and I'll try to make that happen. We'll try to find space. And I believe that is it. Mary, am I forgetting anything? Um, I already did mention the Bico Demo tutorials are every day at lunchtime. Um, you can go to the logistics page and sign up on their Google Docs. They have a spreadsheet all set up. And they have the poster garden. So please take advantage of that, that they're here. And this is a really great opportunity to, to get up to speed on the system. So with that, let's get charged for a great meeting. I want to invite Mike Berenfeld to come up. This is the perfect way to kick off this, today's sessions, I think, with a, with a talk on the science capabilities of the PACE mission. Um, this is a joint talk for, with Paula, between Paula and Mike, but I believe Mike is going to come on up and 